Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have Estefan Vega, founder of Capulet Fest. How's it going, man? So stoked to be here. Thank you. I just wanted to start up. I like getting into some background. I saw that you're a book author. I am. Um, I, yeah, I was, uh, I was writing uh, long before I started doing music stuff, even though my love for music dates before I started writing. So it's kind of like a weird kind of everything comes full circle. Um, yeah, I started writing uh, fifth, sixth grade, you know, Um when I started writing seriously, it was probably like sixth grade, but um, the beginning of that was fifth grade. And then, uh, yeah, worked on worked on several books. Um, I published seven. And during that chunk of time was when Capulet got formed. So. OK, what, what type of books are they? Uh, supernatural fiction. Generally, um, I weave some psychological stuff in there, some thriller stuff in there, a little bit of horror, um, some coming of age elements, very character driven. Um, but yeah, I mean, fans of like Stephen King, Ted Decker, you know, that kind of stuff. Is it like a series or is it just like separate books? It's both, right? So I have um, I have some books that are separate and each individual. I have some short story. I have a short story collection, and then I have a couple um, separate short stories that are individual. And then I have a series, which is I'm actually wearing the shirt today. Uh, Arson Saga is is the series. How did you get involved in the music scene? <sighs> Somewhat accidentally, um, when Arson the first book was coming out. I wanted to do a very unique like release show event concert book release launch all kind of together and uh reached out to several rock bands and we we did a, a really cool show it was definitely smaller low-key um but it was a it was an awesome experience that it, it kind of like i don't know it was like the groundwork for what i would be doing now you know what i mean um and fast forward like a year, year and a half later, after that happened, uh, I got approached at a book signing by a kid uh, who had read my book and was starting to book shows in the area. Asked me if I wanted to be a part of it, thought we could be a good team, um, utilizing my, my skills with the books and the promotion aspects when it comes to that kind of thing. And mixed with his you know, desire to get involved in the music scene in our, in our state. And so I said, sure, let's do it. We got together uh, and we formed Capulet. Um, I I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to take all the credit, but it, it, under his uh, originally it was under a different name. I suggested that we come up with a, a cooler name than what he had. So I I fought for the name Capulet, um, and then we we wrestled back and forth. It was him and then there was another kid that was brought on uh at the beginning of it and uh we settled on we settled on capulet and then we started booking the first show um things were moving and it was very exciting and then uh, uh like a day or two before the show uh he he kind of pulled out the other kid pulled out and said we're kind of like we can't really do this right now it's too too hard financially and all that kind of awesome stuff that happens last minute and then the first, and th this was our first show together, right? And uh, the headliner didn't even show up, didn't call us, didn't email us. Oh, sorry, I found out later. Oh, sorry, we double booked. 
I'm like, when were you going to let us know that, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's really how you know that you're off to a great start in your career is when the first show is a horrible experience. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the first show. And then I went on to do more capital shows uh, the following year. And then it just became too hard financially. Um, I was young. I was in my very early 20s and I was still living at home with my dad and uh, basically surviving on my book sales. I would do a book signing or two book signings a weekend and then live off of the money that I that I made from those sales to survive to the next weekend until I did another fair, convention, Comic-Con, festival, that sort of thing. Um, and it, it was very hard. You know, I literally I can remember just traveling from from event to event. Um, sometimes they were local, sometimes they were more regional. So I'd have to drive a little bit farther and just like getting a little bit. I mean, getting excited because of what I was doing, but also getting a little bit depressed because I I only had money to buy Taco Bell. <laughs> so I think I think I single me and my my girlfriend, who's now my wife, I think we single handedly kept Taco Bell in business from 2000 like 10 to like 2013 <laughs> now is is there like um a definition behind like capulet is, is there something significant behind that that's why you wanted the name definitely um so names are very important to me um when, when it comes to even naming my characters in my books um I take it very seriously. Um, it's kind of what identifies the art. And so that's a, that's a big part of why I do it. And so for Capulet, um, where that comes from, obviously, is Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Um, you had the Montagues and the Capulets. They were two warring families, very similar to like West Side Story. And um, for me, Capulet represents like this forbidden love that doesn't really make sense on paper. And that's kind of my love affair with art and music and writing and all that and so it kind of fully encompasses like me chasing this romance that i believe god put in me that i'm trying to live out in everyday life that is almost always an uphill battle almost like that myth of the guy who's pushing the rock up the mountain only for it to fall back down then you gotta push it back up and i feel like it's kind of like a rat race, you know, but it's a rat race that I willingly <laughs> do to myself. Uh, and my wife often asks me, why do you do this to yourself? And I'm like, I don't know, because I feel like God put it in me and I feel like it's my purpose. It's one of my purposes, obviously being a father, being a husband um, and all that. But when it comes to like pursuits in life and like what I feel like I'm on this earth to do, I believe I'm on this earth to make impact. And so if I can't make impact and, and do something great, I don't even really want to do it. And so when it comes to my writing, I give it 110%. When it comes to booking shows and now this festival, I give it 100%. And so, um, or above and beyond even. Um, often to my own detriment and to my own uh, <laughs> exhaustion. But um, it's me chasing this forbidden romance. And so um, there's a line in Romeo and Juliet where uh, uh, Romeo cries out, like, did I defy the stars? Did I defy you stars when he finds out that Juliet uh, might be dead? And so our slogan is defy the stars. It's basically just going up against this Goliath and cutting off its head. <laughs> now, when did you form Capulet Entertainment? What year was that? 2012. So if you look at a lot of our logos and art, um, especially for the festival, you'll see, you'll see MMXII. That's 2012. That's when Capulet was created. And you started booking smaller shows around the area then? Yeah. So my first show was 2010 when Arson came out because it was the release show. But when I created Capulet, that was 2012. Um, and then we did it almost for a whole year. And then I kind of took a break from it for about five years. And then Capula Entertainment just became my publishing imprint. I left my publisher at the time. I formed Capula Entertainment um, to basically publish my short stories and my novels through. And then um, fast forward to 2018. So it was uh, almost five. It might have. 
it was either almost five years or a little bit over five years um, when I brought back Capulet to start booking shows again. And then we did that for like two more years and then COVID shut us down again. Uh, so uh, we're at, you know, strike three. So let's make it count. <laughs> and when did you start Capulet Fest? 2022, which is interesting. A cool story about that. Um, in 2012, when Capulet was formed, I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine um, outside of a venue that no longer exists in Danbury called the Heirloom. Um, and we were talking about shows and festivals and, and I was telling him like, I really want to create like my version of a warp tour for Connecticut. It's like a goal of mine. I, I was like, wouldn't it be cool? And at the time it was, uh, it was called arson fest. I did one, one show called arson fest in 2013. Um, again, like pushing my, you know, as a, as a, like revolves around my series and just pushing that whole, um, trying to trying to mix the scenes together um and so at the time it was called arson fest and i was saying that was my vision but you fast forward 10 years and now capulet fest is created and we actually have our first year one was in 2022 we're now going into year three in 2024 so it's pretty exciting to see um to see what hard work and uh, divine intervention can do now if I wanted to put on a festival, what kind of stuff do you need to do that? You have to, I would say, uh, first thing, go out and buy a straight jacket because you're mentally insane. Don't do it. <laughs> That's the cynic in me um, would say that. But the believer and the dreamer in me would say uh, what you need is um, definitely you have to have a, a, a serious passion for it. Like. I think sometimes as I, as I discovered, uh, <laughs> trying to work with that, with that other young kid twice, cause that wasn't the first time I, we went back and I tried to make amends and let, Hey, let's try it again. And it, it didn't work out a second time either. Um, that's why a lot of times I just work solo because, uh, there's nobody else to blame, but myself, um, not always. I, I think there's there's definitely a time and a place to to be unified and stuff. But um, so I would say you really need a, a, a I would say like a God given passion, like something that comes from not just oh I want to do this. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people have fly by night ideas that they want to do. Like I want to I want to start a bakery. I want to I want to be an you know uh, an athlete or something like that, right? But like there's there's a there's a long line between your desire and then actually seeing that through to completion. You know what I mean? Um, the Not everyone's LeBron James and not everybody is Stephen King and not everybody is Metallica. And do you know what I'm saying? And these are all different spheres of influence. Um, so you really need that passion um, because when things don't go your way, the first thing you're going to want to do is quit, give up, you know, find the nearest bridge, etc. Don't do that, by the way. Um, then I would say it's good to have uh, money. <laughs> so try to have a day job that you can like rely on. And I, for, for so long, I was like so against having a day job because I was like, if I have a day job, that means that my dream didn't pan out and, and that I'm going to have to give up on my dreams. I'm a failure. You know what I mean? So try to ignore some of those voices. Um, because you need something to fuel you until you can make this thing pop off. You know what I'm saying? Um, then I would say, try to surround yourself with a team. You got to get people around you who are trustworthy, who have that same mental illness as you <laughs> to, to want to see the scene grow and to see something like this thrive. Um, and uh it's good to if you, if you can get some investors to to back this you know not only with their words but financially that would help um and then i would say just immerse yourself in the scene in your area your region what's doing really well there what what does your scene need um so for me like uh creating capital fest is kind of like a culmination of like 20 years of of yearning for something like this specifically um, the way that we're doing it, I've never really seen done before, uh, in this region anyway. Um, and I remember like, 
I remember in high school just wanting something like what I'm trying to do um, and hopefully will succeed at in this region. And so like, like I said, a lot of these are, a lot of these are big ideas and they're uh, you kind of know that it's, you kind of know that it's uh, when it's bigger than you, I think is when you find out that it's what you're supposed to do because it's going to take more than just you to see it through. You know, there's a spiritual component. There's a communal component. All those, when all those things link up, that's when success happens. So we're still waiting for, for the culmination, the, the final of that crescendo, but we're, we're getting there. Now you, you have it at uh, the raceway. That's the location. Now, did you like reach out to those guys and say, "Hey, can I put a festival on here?" Or how does that work? Sort of. Uh, so, like, so that's, this is. I, I know that not everybody uh, is going to agree or believe the same way that I do, but this is this is one of those things where I feel like uh, the divine intervention comes in. So I was cutting the hair of a guy who is a, uh, a minister who travels around to different race events around the country, mainly the East coast. Um, and he's a chaplain for, you know, like NASCAR drivers and, you know, racers in the industry. And out of nowhere, he starts pastoring a church that's not far from my barbershop that that I um, at the time was running side by side with my father. Now I run it um, as the owner. And when he comes into the shop, uh, he just so happened to sit in my chair. We just so happened to start talking about my books. I just so happened to start talking about music and that I was booking an artist that he was familiar with. And he's like, it's funny you should say that because I actually know that guy and I've been trying to bring him to Connecticut for a while. This is an interesting meeting. And so that, convers that, that conversation that started with a haircut developed into more than that. And then I told him my desire for, you know, wanting to do a festival, not sure where to bring it uh, and started picking his brain a little bit. And, um, you know, fast forward a couple times, me cutting his hair, this started you know, a discussion about like, Hey, maybe this could be a real thing. Let's actually start looking into some, some options. And he recommended doing it at a speedway. And it was at this time that we started talking about the speedway that I started uh, paying attention to like, you know, welcome to Rockville and Blue Ridge and these other music festivals down South that were also doing it at, at raceways and speedways. And I didn't, I didn't know that at first until I started seeing some of the ads for, you know, I had heard about some of these festivals, but I didn't know where they were actually taking place. Right. And I thought, Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe this is meant to be right. And so I reached out to him and asked him, um, if he would, uh, like have a meeting with the, with the, he, he offered two different raceways. Um, and I said, you know, can we, can we meet up with these guys? And in, in my mind, I wanted a different one than Thompson until we met with Thompson. And it's funny because we had a meeting set up for this other fest, for this other, uh, uh, speedway. And we met with Thompson first, but, but the other one was going to be later that week. And when I met with Thompson, I'm like, I was almost like disappointed. Cause I'm like, man, I really like this spot. But I feel like I feel like we're supposed to do it at the other place um, for 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 some reason, because I just felt like I felt like that was where it was going to happen. And and some maybe one day, but sometimes you're sometimes you're off with your feelings. Um, and so we're walking the grounds and he's like, well, maybe we should move it into Thompson. Maybe we should do it here. 
and the the manager liked the idea of us doing a festival there it was and it's funny because he was telling me that the owners were actually interested in doing music but they didn't know how to get into the get into doing it and so they thought it was kind of a fortuitous meeting us you know at the same time too um but what's interesting about this story uh is that uh <laughs> capula fest did not happen at either of the speedways that first year so uh during this whole time of meeting with the festivals uh or, or not with the festivals meeting with the speedways my my wife got sick while she was pregnant with our son uh to the point where we were concerned if if our child was going to survive um the next week my father got sick and ended up in the hospital and this is all around christmas time and uh my dad did not make it out of the hospital and so th thankfully my wife did my son is okay and uh that was a an interesting month and a half period for me psychologically emotionally uh spiritually and that was a hard time and i almost was ready to pull the plug on capula fest completely but uh and, and it's also weird too because some of the bands that we had lined up also didn't pan out that year um and we were we were having discussions for like a month to two months and i'm like man everything seems to be falling apart um so I, I kind of put the Speedway on the back burner, even though that's really where I wanted to have it. Um, and I, I kind of <laughs> was almost ready to put Capula Fest to bed completely. And uh, I even wrote a couple emails to some people saying Capula Fest is done. I think I'm just emotionally and spiritually just wrecked right now. I can't even think about music or any of that kind of stuff. And uh, I was in a really dark place, but like, I, I powered through it um, and we did Capula Fest, but we did it at a smaller venue. It was an inside show. We still did two stages, um, but it wasn't what I had originally envisioned when we, when we set out to do this, right? And so year two, we went back to what the original vision was. We went back to Thompson and, uh, and we had an awesome first year and well, first year at Thompson, technically second year of Capula Fest. And now we're back for a second year, but technically year three. It gets a little kind of confusing, but we're in year three. <laughs> How many people does uh, does that hold? Oh my goodness. Uh, the venue itself holds over 10K. Um, we are operating like half of the venue. So there's still a whole chunk of the space that's not even being utilized yet. And our goal uh, is that we will. <laughs> and if not for this year, then for future years. We're, we're hoping to see this place packed all three days for years to come. That's the goal. Okay. Um, some of the lineup for this year is A Virtue, Nothing More, Cold, Adelito's Way, Santa Sonia, Until I Wake, Horizon Theory, Nowhere Left, tap root how do you go about putting together a lineup oh my goodness uh you start with so at the i mean even before we did last year's event we had ideas of who we wanted for this year to target right and so there were a few agents that we had even kind of like just sent feelers out and saying hey listen we're interested in them for next year just keep us you know keep us uh, updated with what your plans are right and what's funny is that none of those bands worked out this year <laughs> even though even though we did that so you know if it's one thing this industry has taught me it's uh just lower your expectation believe big expect very little and life will meet you somewhere in the middle <laughs> you know that's that that's that mixture of cynic and believer in me uh but uh yeah so what's interesting about this year is that uh though like i said those bands that we reached out to for feelers didn't pan out but we got so many other sick bands this year that and some of them some of them i was not expecting us to to work you know to work out this year um and they just kind of fell into place almost without 
any effort, you know? Um, some of them did take effort, but, uh, like, yeah, I mean, nothing more was on our, I reached out to nothing more in year one and it didn't work out. Right. And so that was a number one priority for us this year. They were one of the first bands we reached out to. Um, Skillet was <laughs> a dream come true for me as a personally because i've been a fan of theirs since like 2001 or something uh and it's that's for sure a god thing because like i know that i could not have done that on my own like i remember even talking to other bands like about them and literally like almost almost like cynically just being like yeah that's never going to happen for capulet like they're, they're never going to want to play our fest they're too big blah 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 and and it's funny because uh i was supposed to go see a show that they were doing in connecticut um last fall and i had mentally kind of put it in the back burner like oh yeah i gotta go to that show i gotta go to that show and i completely freaking forgot that the show was happening and then i'm at the gym and i'm flipping through my phone and I see on Instagram, I'm like, oh, bro, that was today. Uh, and it's hilarious because like that day, I think I took like a three hour nap. I did nothing that day. So I had more than enough time to go to that show. I had nothing on the books, nothing planned. And as I was flipping through that, in, through the Instagram feed, um, I, I saw one of their videos and I was like, man, dude, like, <sighs> I want, I want them at, at Capulet Fest. And I said a prayer and I'm like, God, like, if you can make this happen, it's all for your glory. Like, it's not me at all. Um, and I said a prayer and the next morning I emailed their booking agent and I think within like an hour, he got back to me and it was a number that I could live with. And we submitted the offer that day. And that... I still, I still sometimes choke up when I'm just like driving and thinking about like, okay, God, you know, that's, thank you. That's you. That's not me. You know, we're, it, we're here to do what we can do. You know what I mean? I feel like if you've ever seen the movie, the matrix, I'm a huge movie fan, right? So in the matrix, there's a part where, uh, uh, the one Neo is talking to the key maker and the key maker tells him, we do only what we're meant to do. And the key maker's job was to get the one to the architect. And he dies, but he gets the one to where he's supposed to go. And so I feel like in some ways, like, I don't know, I find a lot of parallels with movies and music and writing and my own life. And so if you look, he's there. Could you tell me a little bit about how you came up with like the idea for like the clues and stuff on Facebook to try to get interaction and stuff? <laughs> Honestly, dude, I, I don't even remember where I got that from. Like that was all, that was probably not even me. You know what I mean? Um, Cause last year I didn't do it that way. Last year I would just hint at who, uh, who was playing with song lyrics and everybody guessed like almost immediately. Um, and I was like, okay, how can I stretch the anticipation a little bit more and, and create more, uh, create more fun, create more mystery, create more of like, uh, uh, intrigue around the event. And, uh, I just started finding images that I'm like, okay, this image kind of reminds me of this band. Okay. This image reminds me of this song. Or maybe this image has like the song title in the image, like if you look right, you know what I mean? And I, I started having fun with it, just finding images that I could stump people on or misdirect them and, and make them think it's this band. Oh, psych, it's this band. You know what I mean? And so that became uh, some of the fun for me was just watching people's reactions of like who they were hoping it was. And sometimes... Sometimes it wasn't who they wanted, but I got someone bigger or better than what they were expecting. And sometimes there's a couple of guys on there who like are really into it. And it's getting to the point where like they're get they're guessing like after the first clue I give them. 
And it's almost like, dang, dude, how did you get that? <laughs> I'll find like I'll find the most obscure song in the band's catalog and I'll find an image based on that obscure song. And then you get like one or two guys who are like, I got it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you're taking some of the fun out. And so I'll try to like misdirect them sometimes with a different clue that's completely the opposite or that could open the doorway to like three other bands that, hey, maybe it's that one. And so I'm having a lot of fun with it, honestly. It was it was mainly just to try to create um, an atmosphere of fun and engagement and creating anticipation for what's coming next, you know? Yeah, I, I know, like, on some of those, they guess them right. And you, you put up, like, a meme <laughs> and kind of try to misdirect them. Or it could be, you know, I don't know, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, because some, so sometimes they'll guess it on like the second clue, but I still have the rest of the day to, to keep them engaged. So I got to like, you know, I got to keep fishing, but also give them a little bit, you know, it's kind of like a, it's like a tug and, re, you know, catch and release kind of situation, you know, but it's, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun for me. And I hope the, I hope that the fans have had uh, fun engaging with the page and, you know, fun for everybody. That's the goal. Where could we get a hold of you? Facebook, Instagram? Yeah. Um, Facebook is Capula Fest. Instagram, Capula Fest. Um, that's the festival page specifically. And then we also have uh, Capula ENT on Facebook and Instagram. And then uh, CapulaFest.com. And then CapulaENT.com. Um, yeah, those are the main pages. And then obviously we have emails on, on both of them so people can reach out or message us. I mean, we... We do our best to to get back to everybody and to comment back to everybody. I can't. Sometimes they slip through the cracks. I don't mean for that to happen, but sometimes it happens. Um, I know we've had this year a ton of band submissions and a ton of like press pass submissions. And, uh, you know, I have not gotten through all of them. <laughs> it's pretty much my wife and me just dealing with everything. I mean, my wife, I love her. She's amazing. She does all of our design work. She does all of like, the website work, um, all the graphics that you see, that's all her. Um, yeah. So it's hard. It's hard out here for us. And we have, and we have two little ones. I mean, we have my son who's two and we just had a daughter, um, a month, like a little over a month ago. So we're dealing with all that and I'm running a barbershop and I'm doing a festival and I have my daughter screaming 24 seven because maybe she's going to be a future singer. Who knows? <laughs> she got pipes for days. <laughs> okay. Um, can you name the dates that the festival is going and where it's located? Sure. Uh, so it's located at the Thompson Speedway in Thompson, Connecticut. Um, it's a great venue. Where it's situated is like 45 minutes from Worcester. It's about an hour from Boston. Um, it's about an hour from Hartford. Um, Providence is not that far. So we're really centrally located within New England. Um, whether you're in Mass, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, it's less than two hours for you to get to this festival. So like, you're not going to find a cooler festival that's bringing all the stuff that we're bringing in, in this close proximity to you. Um, so we're really excited about that. It's going to be June 28th, June 29th, and June 30th. Uh, Friday is more of like a half day. We're going to have probably like 11 bands, I think. Um, still both stages, we're still going to have food trucks, still going to have like, you know, the beer tents and stuff and vendors. And, um, uh, we're hoping to get, uh, a, a certain kind of meet and greet experience. Okayed by the bands and the agents. We're still working on that either way. They're going to, there's a bunch of meet and greets that are going to be happening regardless, but I, I have something that I would like to do that's special for just Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday is going to be, uh, starting around 12 going till, 
I don't know, till the cops come. <laughs> no, going, going to like 11, 11.30 at night. Um, it's going to be a full pack day, two stages, all three days. I'm like, this is going to be the festival you're going to want to be at. It's awesome. If you're, if you're in New England or if it's a cheap flight or a cheap bus ride or whatever, get your butt to Thompson, Connecticut in June. It's going to be sick. Now, do you have like single tickets or do you have package? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, we have GA day passes. We have uh, VIP upgrades, which include the meet and greets. Um, you get you get them all the meet and greets for that day, plus a lanyard, plus a poster. And then we have uh, and those are each individual day. And then we have the mega package, which we call the Capulet Royal Pass, and that gets you everything that's included in the the GA pass. It gets you everything included in all the meet and greets. It gets you uh, merch. It also gets you into the Capulet Lounge, which is basically air conditioning, some seats, free water, uh, nice bathrooms, the whole the whole deal, as well as early entry and VIP parking. So like, and those are like the VIP experiences and the Capulet Royal Passes are both limited. So like, if you're even thinking of doing that, it's the best deal. You save hundreds of dollars um it's the ultimate it's the ultimate pass and do you have anything like with uh hotels or motels like a package weekend deal yeah um so we don't really have a package per se but we are going to be working uh with the local hotels in the area last year we did southbridge uh we did days in and then there was i'm drawing a blank on the other one uh, I think it was La Quinta. Um, we're probably going to work with all three of them again. Uh, I know for sure we're working with Southbridge. Um, they're literally like 16 minutes away from the Speedway. Where Thompson is situated, uh, I don't think they have any hotels directly in Thompson. But all the hotels that we would be working with are within, I don't know, 12 minutes to, to 20 minutes in that range. So it's not super far. Um, it's just Thompson's more of a rural area. Um, and that's where the speedway is. So we got to work with what we got, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Southbridge, we're definitely going to be having, um, like a festival special where people can just call Southbridge and get a festival rate for the weekend. So yeah, that, that's going to be happening. Uh, details are going to be coming shortly for that. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on the show today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I would just say if, if, uh, if anybody out there is questioning your purpose, just search, you know, keep looking until you find it, pray, seek, knock, and the door will open. <laughs>